Cherry has students at Bognor College of Education are being given the opportunity of working with children from local schools. Children who for some reason or another are not gaining from the school situation. They are disadvantaged in the sense that some have emotional problems, others social problems, others are simply slow learners. Some lack in confidence, they need success situations and approval. Others lack concentration and so areas of interest to stimulate the child have to be looked for. These children come to college once a week and work with students on a one-to-one -one basis. Close contact with the schools is maintained throughout and after discussions with the class teachers, individualised units of work are prepared in advance by the students. Whilst a well-equipped resources centre has been established at the college, it was essential that all equipment should be capable of being used by each child in a classroom situation and without the aid of the teacher. The language master, cassette playback machine and informatic camera were used and each unit of work made self-teaching and self-checking as well as being required to show progression. The children must be moving forward all the time and clear objectives therefore had to be formulated and a stimulating learning environment designed. The learning process will only be positive if the child is in an atmosphere where he feels accepted and respected. He must know that the teacher is sensitive to his needs. It is this which will provide the necessary partnership between the child and the student. Stephen was a slow learner, particularly with his reading. Not a complete non-reader, but showing little enthusiasm. Reading without interest or understanding, and unable to write a story of his own for what he wrote was merely a string of unrelated words without meaning. Starting from a point of interest, we took Stephen out and let him take photographs. These were made into a personal reading book, and with the help of taped instructions and language master reinforcement, Stephen matched the correct sentences to each picture, writing these sentences into a book later and adding his own drawings. As further reinforcement, these same sentences were cut up into individual words, and Stephen rebuilt them. By this time he was beginning to recognise many of the words and to know their meaning. And although he experienced some failure, on the whole he completed this work extremely quickly. Later on Stephen was introduced to some new vocabulary and prompting for the sentence building was given through the stimulation of taped stories or more photographs. Stephen mastered this work well and was very soon able to create his own sentences and stories without any prompting whatsoever. By starting from a point of interest and giving Stephen sentences to read which reflected his own thoughts and feelings about an experience, the printed word became more real to him. Stephen responded well and manifested an interest and enthusiasm that had been quite absent earlier on. David's problems were more complex, but typical of many children, left-handed, writing from right to left, an inability to recognise the simplest of words, lateral and vertical reversal of letters, and moreover an inconsistency even as far as his mistakes were concerned. Our first aim was to give David some awareness of shape, and here you see him working with a set of tiles, matching shapes and spaces. To give progression we moved from large tiles with coloured cutouts through to small, plain ones. Building on David's success, we gave him a series of cards with shapes stuck onto them. On tape, David was instructed to find the odd one out of each set and draw a ring around it. So that these cards could be used over and over again, they were covered with a plastic film and David used a felt pen or china graph pencil for the circling. He then progressed to movable shapes. In each set, one shape was crooked, and David was required to correct this misalignment. He could not really fail, since only one shape on each card was mounted in such a way that it could be rotated, and that only to the correct position. Again, the work was graded from the obvious to the more subtle. We then moved on to work about actual objects. Photos were taken of everyday things. These were then cut out of their surrounds, and David had to try to fit the right object into the photo. It was hoped in this way that he would be encouraged not only to look at the shape of an object, but also to realise that everything has a place where it belongs.
Using the same basic photos, we went on to these trick pictures where an object has been placed out of position. We hoped to increase David's awareness of everything having a right way up by asking him on tape to look carefully at the photo and point to the object which was wrongly placed. After successful completion of this stage, letters were introduced. Once again, David was given a set of cards and asked through taped instructions to ring the odd one out on each page. Much later on, David moved on to word and sentence matching, the word and sentence having to do with what was wrong in the picture. Reinforcement was given through the language master. To encourage a left-to-right eye movement, David was given a taped story about a circus to listen to, with associated pictures laid out in a strip cartoon fashion. At various stages on the tape, David was instructed to move the frame along to the next picture and find the language master card which went with this picture. Consolidation and reinforcement of this was prepared through stories about two of the circus characters, the language master again providing the link between the spoken and the written word. And David then went on to make a model circus. This took a long time, with David cutting out the characters and animals, sticking them onto cards, colouring them, and writing their names. But such was David's involvement that he did not tire of the task. With a child like this, it is necessary for us to be constantly strengthening and re-emphasising previous pieces of work. Consequently, progress may seem slow. Yet repetition is vitally important even for the bright child. And for those with difficulties of one sort or another, it is of even greater necessity and value. With a child like David who has such deep-rooted problems, we have to progress extremely slowly, placing emphasis on constant reinforcement and consolidation. Finally, the now familiar circus characters are being used to encourage a realisation that everything has a proper place. Instructions on language mastercards tell David to put the ball on the sea lion's nose or to stand the elephant on his box. As you can see, he has mastered the task quite well. He is concentrating deeply on what he is doing, handling the glue and the crayons with a high degree of dexterity, taking an obvious interest in his work. Yet in spite of all this, David is still experiencing great difficulty in acquiring the basic skills, and much more work of this type is needed to help him overcome his problems. Carolyn, lively but unsettled showing little or no interest in the school situation, nervous, finding difficulty in concentrating for any length of time on any one activity, flitting from one thing to another. She was a nuisance to the other children and was described by her class teacher as wild. Her reading was retarded. She would look at a book and say whatever came into her head, and she had no concept of one written word equaling one spoken word. Carolyn's interest in animals was discovered and a visit to the local zoo arranged. She was given an instamatic camera to take photos of whatever she liked. Giving a disadvantaged child an experience like this is of immense value. So often these young children are lacking in experiences, and by taking them out in this way, an opportunity is provided for language development and for much follow-up work. The instamatic camera is a useful piece of equipment for such children to use for the photos that are taken will reflect the child's own point of view and idea of what is relevant. Later on, the teacher can direct the child's attention to new elements in the photos. Carolyn was also encouraged to speak about what she saw, so that reference could be made to her comments at a later stage. The photos taken were made into a book. Shapes were drawn underneath, and corresponding shapes with words written on them were made. Language master cards were also prepared and Carolyn was asked to match the shape card and the language master card to the correct photo. All instructions were on tape. 
this work was consolidated by means of language master cards, which told Carolyn to draw pictures of some of the animals. And then, here, a further extension was prepared, using the same photographs. A shape-matching technique was again used, but this time sentences were introduced, based around the comments which Carolyn had actually made whilst at the zoo. The same sentences were placed on language master cards as a double check and as reinforcement. This self-correcting element was incorporated into many aspects of these children's work. Not only does it foster their confidence, but it serves to free the teacher to help other children in her charge. To extend Carolyn's vocabulary, new animals were introduced through a taped story, and again she had to match the word and picture cards. And now phonics were introduced. Instructions were placed on tape, and Carolyn was required to match the language master cards to the picture of the animal whose name began with the sound given on the card. Consolidation was given through sorting a new set of picture and words cards. This time there were no cut-out shapes to help her, but language master cards were available. Another sorting game followed. All the objects whose name began with a certain sound had to be placed underneath the picture of the animal whose name also began with that sound. At the end of this unit of work on animals, that is, after two full terms work, Carolyn was taken out again, this time to a farm. Again, photos were taken, and time was devoted to broadening Carolyn's vocabulary. Developing skills in spoken language is a preparatory stage for experience in written language. And as a result, Carolyn was able, after some discussion, to make up her own sentences about her visit and make her own reading book. The sentences would therefore be an expression of her own thoughts and feelings. They are not part of a reading scheme which has no significant reality or interest to Carolyn. She can gain confidence in the knowledge that she is really communicating when she speaks or writes. It is, of course, not possible for a teacher to make a visit to the zoo or elsewhere with just one child in the present school situation. But this should change when assistance are available to the teacher. Or, as in this case, students could be brought in to help. But what is important is not so much the fact of the visit as the child's declared interest in a topic. Carolyn was now beginning to read with more enthusiasm. And as you can see, her writing shows evidence of a firmness and self-confidence that was lacking earlier on. Other material has been developed for Carolyn to broaden her experience and vocabulary. Here, a new set of words have to be matched to a picture of a village with the help of language master cards. And broadening out from this, but still focusing on the same picture and theme, sentences have been placed on language master cards. To make this another self-teaching unit, instructions are put onto tape, and Carolyn works on her own. She finds the appropriate language master card and draws a picture and writes a sentence in her own book. Now her self-assured approach can be noted. She is happily interested in what she is doing. She is far more settled and is concentrating on the task in hand, drawing and writing firmly and without a trace of anxiety. Finally, here, the same picture is used to develop number work. Questions are asked on language master cards, and Carolyn records the answers in her book. Carolyn is now showing a more stable interest in all aspects of her schoolwork. The individual attention has helped her greatly, but this kind of work can be incorporated into the normal infant classroom. With the children's interests taken as a starting point, carefully staged work can be developed, guiding them through their problems at their own pace. A difficult and somewhat aggressive child in the classroom, James showed little interest in school and consequently progress was slow. His problem was basically an emotional one. What he needed was interest and security. In conversation he revealed an enthusiasm for the sea and he was therefore taken to the beach where he collected various objects to be used in some simple science experiments. These objects were taken back to the classroom where James placed them in an aquarium and discovered various things about them. Would the seaweed float or sink?
How quickly would the pebble sink to the bottom? Young disadvantaged children need help in broadening what they see so that they can question the world about them and develop needful generalizations and concepts. An extension of this work was prepared and James was given an assortment of everyday objects and asked to find out whether they would float or sink. Instructions were placed on tape and James recorded his answers in a book by drawing a picture of each object and writing the word float or sink underneath his picture. Here, James's interest and pride in his work can be noted, for he is not satisfied with letting a mistake pass by. He looks carefully at what he has written and corrects it to match the word on the language master card. This experimental approach channeled James's liveliness and focused his interests, and more work was prepared along the same lines, with these things, salt, rice, coffee, dissolve in water. The tape recorder and language master were utilized to give instruction and reinforcement, and James recorded his answers in a book which had been prepared for him in advance. More detailed questions followed. Could James taste the salt once it had dissolved, for example? James now turned to an activity which linked with his earlier visit to the sea, making a model aquarium, building into it seaweed, fish, and other things which he had noticed. Now James's complete immersion in his task can be seen. He has taken a pride in what he is doing concentrating thoroughly on the task in hand. Finally, another stage of James's experiment-based work can be seen here. He has made his own simple balances and is balancing sweets against various objects. Again, notice his absorption in his task. These results were recorded in a book in a similar way as before and the answers checked later by the student or teacher. Once again, all instructions for this were pre-recorded on tape and reinforcement given through language master cards. James responded well to this approach, and over a period of two terms he began to show greater stability and more interest in the school situation. We have taken a look at how students are trained in the use of simple equipment as related to the needs of particular children. But this type of resource-based approach is also possible within the framework of a school, as you can see here. The need now is to follow up the process that has been begun in the colleges with its practical evolution in the classroom situation.